Well, hello again, and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. You dropped the sentence! So my... <laughs> well, a part of me is trying to do it like muscle memory. Right. Because both Dan and I forget to say Garthwaite for me a lot. So every once in a while, I'll do it. No, it's way. good. It just threw me off because yeah, I'm I know. used I to like, like a three-parter. And, uh, Too funny. You know. Well, I know because, you know, Picking a name or changing your name it's, is hard, is. you know. It's, it's a lot harder than people realize. It's a pain. Um, and it really I'm, is the muscle memory. It's yeah. literally like the, the routine of it, right. right? The saying of it. Yeah, yeah. and I haven't done it. So secure. I haven't done any other things. Oh, you haven't done your things? <laughs> no. 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 No, 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 no. Well, you know, I always joke because my husband's last name is different to mine, right? His last name is Kalitz or Kalitz, I guess right. they say here. I say Kalitz. And, and uh, I was like, well, Chirke and Kalitz. And I was like, well, I think Kalitz would have been slightly easier here. So now I kind of wish my woman's Libby... <laughs> 90s was like maybe I should have just taken his name. <laughs> so Tammy is looking I up. Was. Uh, I, I did the, find it. Uh, so, there's going to be a hockey game because our producer was just mentioning that he's got a whole bunch of sports things he has to film this week, and uh, uh, I asked him about the hockey. So there is a hockey game that is coming up a bet, between a, a charitable hockey game, the Libertarian Party and the NHGOP, right? Yeah. yeah so basically both. And it's a fundraiser. Just field, you know, anybody they know that can play hockey pretty much. Right. I mean, it's not exactly. It was for, fun last year. It was tons year. of fun. Like, I actually give a lot of kudos to the guys who did skate. I mean, these aren't people who skate, play hockey. They were actually really yeah. good. I was, I was, uh, a pleasantly so, impressed. Right. I was actually I was like, impressed. Wow, these are pretty good. He only yeah, had like guys. Steve Matthew. Steve Matthews like not, he's, he's not he was young out there. Buck, you know, he was, you know, out there skating like crazy man. So, um, so, uh, this so tickets are available, and we recommend, especially because last year we had about eight to one. I would say, or ten to one, or twenty to one, on the yeah. libertarian side compared yeah, to the Republicans. Super, yeah. So because it, it was originally organized by some more uh, libertarian leaning people and whatnot, and um, after the game last year, we said, you know, no, we're going to reach out more to more Republicans to get them to come cheer on the team. Um, it takes place Saturday, February 25th from 4 to 6 p.m. at the JFK Ice Arena. Tickets are just $15 a person. Kids are free. And all of the proceeds, um, I usually do a big raffle, like a 50-50 raffle, all of the proceeds go to the Children's Scholarship Fund. Yep. So it's for a good cause. Um, lots of fun. Very low key, but I mean, kids are free. So if you're family for 30 bucks, you can be raising money for somebody and bringing the kids out and not having to spend a lot of money on it. Right. Um, and you can get tickets at nhlibertyhockey.com. I knew there was a website. So uh, highly recommend do that. Yeah. That's It's a fun afternoon. We had a lot of fun last time. I mean, come end of February, there's like nothing to do. No, and it honestly it channeled all of my, I forgot I was like a cheerleader in primary school or something. And we were out there and everyone's like, Carla, lead some cheers. I'm like, I don't oh, know yeah. any American <laughs> cheers, but we can make some noise. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'll be coming up. That'll be fun. Um, trying to think if there's any other specific events coming up um i i we've mentioned it before there's the cafe at the courier which i still haven't gotten to this year um the ice castles might be opening up up north they yeah. have a shut down production because the weather mcintyre oh, really? yeah it was it's been too warm, too warm. um mcintyre's still open and making snow and stuff so do i don't know how but they're managing so you oh can, my goodness it was so nice out yesterday i didn't know it was gonna snow because they, they it, didn't tell us they said snow showers well, and well I first of all plow you know i was working off tammy's whole thing last week where she's like it's gonna be above freezing every day it so is. i was like oh i'm not even gonna check the weather it's gonna be awesome and then i woke up and we had, we like, had like three four, four yeah. inches of and it snow. was funny because we have a guy who comes and plows our driveway and we're in we bed and i hear that well i mean you have a little i have a very long driveway True. and um i hear this and then you see the lights and dan's like oh greg's here and i was like hmm but sometimes he comes just to salt and i kind of glanced and i'm like nope that's definitely snow and even uh, the guy who plows where i work he said he would had no idea it was going to snow. He yeah. was in bed. He heard the city plow and was like, crap, I have to get up and plow. Although uh, uh, some of my friends were posting yesterday and they were like, yeah, you know, if you work outside or you do <laughs> construction or, you know, you know, these, you, things. You know yeah. these things. So uh, um, it was not it, literally on Sunday. I was saying to myself, here it is January 15th, January 15th. And there was not a speck of snow in my yard. 
I thought it was uh, so. No, I I'm, it's okay. My right. favorite thing is to go out when it's when just it's fresh. you know, and you're the first person yeah. on the trail, and you're like, I am trailblazing through the woods and the snow. So that was me and Obi yesterday. It was a lot of fun. It was beautiful. Uh, you know what's not beautiful? The homeless problem in Manchester. Yeah, I, you know, I I was listening to we were in the car and they were zooming through the stations, and we caught a, t- a talk radio, and I'm not going to point of which one. And I kind of was a little annoyed for lack of a better word because the the news the radio guy was saying how oh manchester's you know stepped up and doing a great job and it's just a handful of negative people that are you know and i'm thinking no actually it's lots of people i work with people who live in manchester nobody is okay with the situation like and it's not a new situation this isn't like they had that emergency aldermanic meeting well, I hate to tell you, this is an did you hear about that? Because it just I, bubbled it, up. I yeah, saw it. because I, um, I know. I think you ended up attending, and I didn't. Actually no, know. I didn't go. I think somebody sent it to me, and I was like, "What is this?" Because I was at work, and then I was like, "What is going?" Because it was on? like on a Monday at three. It was Friday. Or, at, no, it was well, like it was Friday like, at three or okay. Friday it was at like five. a weird time, and I was like, "How did I miss this?" I didn't yeah. feel clued in. No, nope. and they basically voted to you know expand the emergency service because this is an emergency. The homeless crisis that we've been having for you know four years is suddenly last week because business owners finally started complaining is now an emergency so this is what's wrong with our well, city government we we well, don't isn't do it anything in a mayoral we, election year the, so well, suddenly that, yeah. people now we are to, like right. oh we got to do something so i wanted to read yes. this letter quick so this is in today's union leader and uh, just to the point of it's not just, you know, a handful of people, I think there's a deep-seated sense of frustration. So this is a letter by a Roseanne Sullivan of Weir, and she says, the headline is, what about rights of those enduring homeless blight? To the editor, the ACLU is going to sue the city for eviction of homeless camps in Manchester because they have rights. What about the rights of the daycare that had to close because of them? What about the businesses that are losing clients and on the verge of going out of business themselves? Who will want to relocate there? What about the rights of the taxpayers who are afraid to walk on the sidewalks? And now the Cashin Senior Center is not adequate? Maybe it's time the ACLU started housing them. It's a sad state of affairs when the majority no longer rules. Thank you for letting me get this off my chest. So thank you, Roseanne, for writing in because I think it's legitimately expressing well, a sense of frustration. So this is some, a takeaway I had last week. Um, I think the majority of people, I think the majority of city residents, like, or area residents, are all, they see, obviously they see the crime. I mean, that's what you read in the the Nextdoor app. It's almost all the time. Here's this guy on my ring stealing stuff off my back porch. Or here's this person on ring who came up my driveway in the middle of the night and was checking my garage door. You know, like, Mm. it's it's an always thing. It's not like you hear it once in a blue moon. And then we have, um, I mean, legitimately, the health and safety of our residents. The rest of our... Not just the health and safety of those who are choosing to live in a tent. Because I'll tell you, I, I would like to see a catalog. I'd like to see a list. We all, the numbers always seems to hover between 130 and 150 chronically homeless. What is the deal with those 150, 160, 300, whatever the number is, people? Are they addicted to drugs? Because when I drove down Manchester Street after having lunch with Dan yesterday... We, we drive, and Dan, I look, and Dan looks at me, and he goes, they're all wasted. I mean, these people, you know, when you see somebody standing on the sidewalk, and they're just literally doing things like this, that isn't because the wind blew them over. That's because they're wasted. They are higher than high, and they can't even stand still. That is what you see when you go by these homeless encampments. Sure, there's probably people who are, you know, down on their luck somehow and haven't figured out how to obtain a better place, and which means you you have no family, no friends, and no nobody. You don't have a coworker. You have nothing. But again, I think it's fair to say at this stage, and correct me if I'm wrong, and someone let me know if this isn't right. If you want services, there, there is there is no reason anyone should or be living on the, the right. streets unless they're 
actually choosing it. Well, and it, there was another man found dead in inside the shelter the other day. He was like 30 years old, if I'm not mistaken. But the thing is, is that supposed to be a supposedly they have a no tolerance for drug? Well, obviously, you're not doing a good job if somebody do- drops dead, of, like, inside your shelter. So... Yeah, and, and you know, I don't know. Maybe there's, a, maybe there is like a halfway thing. Maybe there should be some places where they're like you're off the streets, but you're yes. using while you're so detoxing. They, they're talking or whatever, about all right? these like, things. Uh, they're doing. I mean, it is kind of hard to just go from zero from from a hundred to zero. Like you're addicted. But to... But there are endless facilities all over the city to help that you know offer Suboxone and all these right. different things. So like, wait. So, so did we get clarity from the mayor that we could get some kind of audit and reckoning no, so that I we don't know she, how much money I don't is think, being spent? I know Victoria and, keeps calling for it. She's called. She she did a video down near the homeless encampment and said, and I don't. I'm going to be paraphrasing, but good on her for like actually saying the words. She said, you know, everybody talks about all this. We're going to get this money and that money. And she goes, let me tell you this: all this federal money. None of it has an incentive attached to solve no. the problem. These are like, it's almost like we look at the homeless crisis as if they're city employees because we there is no incentive for many of the players in the solving the problem to actually solve the problem. I'm not saying that's everybody. I'm not saying that's a firefighter. You know, like, I'm, but there are, there are players in this puzzle that we're looking at that if the homeless situation went away, they would be out of money. And that is a huge incentive for people not to actually resolve the problem. From what I could figure, looking, I was Googling this morning, looking back at stuff, and this is not a new problem. We've been talking about it. We talk about it. We talk about it. We talk about it. We never seem to have any actual change. We have, um, now we're going to use the Terrell House for 16 women's beds, right? But they're temporary shelter beds. And then there, you know, you go back and there was this, this entity that was going to offer 26 beds and this woman, well, ever, those aren't real solutions. Offering someplace where somebody can put their head down in, indoors is not a lengthy solution. Um, I was at the Cashin Center last mm, week. I was going to ask you about that. For uh, the Friends of Piscataqua River Park meets at the Cashin Center once a month. Um, and we weren't sure what, how that was going to work because we have our meetings in the evening. Um, So we got there, and the first firefighters we encountered, because there was at least three higher up the food chain firefighters working that that evening, um, they were like, oh, I don't think you want to be here. You don't want to be here. And we're like, well, we have a meeting. And then another person came out and said, oh, no, you can use the conference room. So from the conference room, I could, they were setting up, they put, they take the cash and center. You can see this on Facebook. There's, um time-lapse videos, they cover the entire floor every day with that RAM paper that you use when you're, re- when you're um, redoing your house. They cover that, they, pu- they set up all these cots, they put out the tables so that these people can't go anywhere other than into this co- big room. Then they set up the table with all the food. And I, my, I was like, what, did they, they say we should put the food on the big table? So I didn't want to be a total jerk when I was there, but Endless bottles of apple juice, huge bags of apples, bags of oranges, pop tarts, and like a whole eight foot table full of like snacky goody things. And I thought, well, where is that coming from? You're like, who's providing that? And so this isn't just a w- place to stay warm. You can come here and get your pop tarts and your apple and your orange, you know. And I was like, you know, I think people, I think people fail to see all the things that are already provided to this group of people. They can get meals at, you know, uh, at Fit. They're the 1269 or 1267, whatever it is, the cafe provides meals. They provide overnight um, place to stay. You can't sleep there, but you can go indoors and sit at a table. Um, There are endless uh, food banks and churches that give out food all the time. And, and and nothing has a cost from the home from their perspective. So yesterday there was um, our producer here brought it up and I had forgotten about it. So I, either yesterday or the day before, someone calls nine one one from between Stark Park and the railroad tracks. So like hardly near a street. Victoria right. Street's the closest one. And the fire department goes down and there was a guy with a burn on his foot. I really couldn't tell from the article if he was like debilitated or he just had a burn on his foot. But the 
the fire department's got to go in there on like an ATV because it's that oh, remote. Wow. And I thought, yeah, all of this costs money. Everything costs money. And this emergency meeting, they agreed to allocate something like $850,000 emergency funds. I mean, the Terrell house alone is going to house, I think it's 26 women. And when you look at the number that they did, that's $101 per night, every night per person. And I was like, what are we getting back for spending all that money over and over and over again? Because I don't, in four years, we haven't seen, where's the, where's the progress? Right. So, um, Looks like, oh. <laughs> that was a message from veterans on the screen next to me. Oh, he's still there. Whatever you're dealing with. Okay, so we have a technical difficulty here. I don't know if I'm supposed to be seeing that. But um, oh, I think he wanted a, to play okay, the... So, um, th oh, I think he wants to play this. Okay, you can we're going to put this one up on the screen. place where they have community, a place where they have their own possessions, significant possessions that, um, you know, that effectively they're being asked to take from place to place to place in a given day. And I think that's unfair. It's not how any one of us who, who have houses live their lives. News 9 spoke with Manchester Mayor Joyce Craig today. She would not talk about the lawsuit, but says the city is putting $800,000 into efforts to address the issue. We have uh, authority to utilize the Terrell House. The YWCA will be managing that. And we are also looking uh, to uh, get approval on a second location for a sh an emergency shelter. Legal expert Patricia LaFrance says both sides appear to agree there's a problem that needs to be addressed. What the ACLU was arguing that you know, you can't kick people out when they have no place to go and then punish them because they have no place to go. But that's the Manchester point is, listen, we're giving them time to vacate and they need to vacate. Now, the ACLU says that. Yeah, it's it's. Look, uh, well, look, it's a difficult nut to crack. Right. But here's the reality. You have to be able to balance all the interests and to this lady's point in the newspaper when wh how does it become that that the, this group of people who aren't actually like pulling their weight start to get they more, seem to be winning they it's yeah like, like more of it and, I mean, and honestly Tammy thousand dollars to address the solution is actually private property. So, you know, no one wants to talk about that, but that is the solution. And, you know, if if someone made some, and we've done this, other towns did do this, Peterborough did it, and then they shut it down, right? Like, can why can't the city get a plot of land? I don't know, down at the Sununu Center over on the north side, there's a massive, why don't? Why can't they camp there? Why even, does it have to be in downtown? You giant... could move this problem somewhere else if, you know, as a temporary sort of thing. Well, of I course, that, that doesn't solve no. the problem. Because that's what, that is the, what they constantly seem to do is just have this temporary, we're going to fix this for two weeks until the... Until right, the I mean, I think what they're trying to do is they're like, how can we get them to the west side? Yeah, this is well, genuinely how it's starting to feel. Um, um, hence the sort of cash in thing, which just doesn't make sense to me. Because no, and, and um, there's there are facility there are spaces they could better use. I mean, they they're talking about the bus station. Yet the bus station's not. Because that's closed now. Right. If that I drove by today, the it's still empty. If this is an emergency, why is it still closed today? How many days does it take to unlock a door and let people come in well, and sleep? Well, both that, if you're if they're doing the the brown papers with the cots, go do it there. Yeah. I don't. That's what I'm saying. There's there are places that can be used. It seems so, like the government typically moves so incredibly slow that they're, they're emergency. I got to keep in mind. Yesterday was a holiday, so nobody in the city was doing anything to help the homeless. So, so uh, not to be extremely rude, because you know I'm a big fan of Martin Luther King. So yeah. yesterday was Martin Luther King Day. I did 
Did you see that statue, that statue they just, just did in weird. Boston? Did, did anyone, if, if you haven't seen it, guys, maybe go, go Google it. Now, fair enough. I'm sure there was some angle where it looks good. But basically, it is a bronze statue of two hands. And depending on where the photo is taken Kinda from, looks like it looks like poop. It looks, looks like, like um, things. it looks like male things. genitalia. Yeah. It looks like all kind of stuff where I was just like, and did I, no I one heard a thing yesterday, somebody um, in the King <laughs> family is like yeah we're not happy we're not yeah happy i don't understand what what happened there but it's it's not good <laughs> it was not good um at all yeah the, um so yeah i um i do worry about the health and safety aspect citywide just because um i don't know if this was last week i think it was there was the woman you know who said she found needles on the trail um there are a couple spots in the Piscataqua river park that dan took some pictures of that you know you can't they bubble up um and when people are urinating and defecating in the public space that is a health hazard like why we 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 watched this uh it's on netflix it was uh the hatchet hitchhiker oh, or something i started something. watching it i couldn't even watch the we, whole thing so we started yeah. watching well i actually to be candid i fell asleep but louis sort know. of powered through it you know it was a late sunday yeah, night kind of like oh whatever I thought right it was gonna be something different so so the, it, in a nutshell it's basically the story of this guy he's he's kind of like a homeless hobo but that romanticized he's notion like a hippie. right like so, a vagabond hippie I'm, yeah. not, I'm not gonna live in the rules i'm just gonna go from place which to i place. think is part of some of these, these people. people's but issue then go someplace right else. And, and the question becomes, so does the substance abuse cause the mental illnesses? Or vice versa. Does it exacerbate it? Like, what is the, what is the chain there of right. how it works, right? So this kid is clearly, I mean, an alcoholic, right? Yeah. So he's just... So what happened was, he, he they made a video of him. He literally smashed, smashed someone with a hatchet at the back end. That was attacking That was attacking else someone else, and that went viral. Then this was when viral videos and the mainstream media or the legacy media was still searching, like they still thought, oh, here's something viral, we should report on it here instead of realizing they're irrelevant and that, you know, the internet is the way it was going to go. So all these mainstream media outlets were like chasing down this guy. Trying to this find guy. this guy. And so he became vastly popular, but everyone seemed to sort of disregard their, you know, and these were like, you know, it was like Vice TV or, you know, the Jimmy Kimball show yeah. and all these people were like, oh, we'll just have this guy. And it was like they weren't actually processing that one, this is a homeless, homeless person who clearly has some issues, yes. who just used a lot of violence to help in a attack situation, but that, you know, maybe is unstable right. and not a safe situation. Like they were just. They just didn't seem to get it. Like it's almost like the, 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 the perception and the reality of things. I think people are genuinely struggling with that. You know, like some of these people are actually quite dangerous yeah. Yeah. you know like i remember spending time in san francisco maybe 2018 ish and actually like being scared you yeah. know at traffic lights because their homeless yeah. problem is you know we post the photos here and people will be like oh it started to look like san francisco there and of course it's not and the reason i think that we're talking about this issue so much is because we don't want it to become san francisco we don't want the no. solutions to become, we're just going to tolerate this because right. what you tolerate is what you get. Yep. And so if the people in the city are saying, this is not what we want. I mean, look at the vague, just look at the, even just downtown, there's like three vacant, at least three or four vacant rest, you know, spaces in the Elm Street little stretch. Who is going to open a business today when you might have to clean human feces off your step tomorrow. I mean, I mean coming in this to, to the studio just, today was ridiculous. Oh, there's it was this pile incredibly, of trash outside. It's disgusting. Uh, you I'm know, sorry. So, so who knows? But so just to close the loop on the hitchhiker thing, um, I don't want to spoiler alert it, but, um, you know, it turns out the guy's like yeah. and actually pretty dangerous and so you know we need to look at that because the question also becomes if we're tolerating this this behavior so it's it's romantic it seems very um 
uh, you know, on the road and very, yeah, you know, like, free. oh, I'm a vagabond. And, and this kid in particular did say, well, you know, the, the rules aren't for me, you know, life on the road and all of that. And that's grand. Go do that. But not if you're pooping on the street I'm paying well, for. The, <laughs> this is another piece that just drives me insane because it's simply incorrect. And we see this with a lot of issues now, but it's this playing off of people's emotions that they're not thinking through. This could happen to you. You could be homeless tomorrow. And I think to myself, nope, nope. I'm not gonna be homeless tomorrow. I'm never gonna be homeless. I've never seen, out of all the ups and downs in my life, living on a sidewalk was never going to be an option. I And, it, and that is how you get manipulated, right? Because people because, start to go, oh my God, this could happen to me tomorrow. Well, and it's it's, it's, not. it's the bleeding heartness and compassion and empathy and yep. all of those emotions are good feelings. You know, like I'm not saying let's all become heartless no. monsters. But the thing is also, it's exploitative. Yes. Like if, if we're saying there are enough services, these people don't have to be living on the street, we're spending, I don't know, $100,000 per homeless it's person, so whatever the number is, right? Like, I'm like, I mean, at this at what point uh, do, we do we say, well, no, again, this is not what we're willing to tolerate as a city or as a society. Nope. You know, we just really, there's this, there's this uh, I keep but saying the word malaise, but, you know, there's just... We gotta, you know we gotta if fix you go some back, things, they make, folks. They, people will try to play on the emotions and make it sound like, well, this is a now problem because of housing prices. But this was this problem in Manchester has been there the entire time that Joyce Craig's been mayor, which was before the housing issues. Uh, people fail to be able to comprehend, and this one amazes me, that even higher end apartments will help alleviate the housing cr crunch because if you. Uh, add any number of any size, any price units to the market, the market is more flooded. So when they open 100 units on Elm Street, even if they're $3,000 a month units, it still is freeing up something someplace else. Right. And it, it cause no, there's no developer who's going to build um, low income housing. They're just not gonna. But what they could, the city could immediately do is lift the restrictions on um, a, a a accessory dwellings. And Let all of people that. have apartments above their garage. Let people rent the basement of their house if it's got a Negro. You know, like, stop I saying. I we passed a bill well, like we a couple did, but of they years still ago. Have to so be it's attached. a local. It's just or, crazy. Right, but Manchester right. doesn't allow any of these things. And maybe if we did, maybe there'd be 20, 30, 40 more little units that would be available. So I'm gonna tell you, here are the solutions. Smaller, limited government, yep. letting people use private property to use their rights to say this is not acceptable and uh, leading with compassion and empathy, but also putting your foot down. Yep. That's fair. <laughs> that sounds right. A um, little bit of snow this week, a little bit of melting this week, back and forth. It is January. We're going to be coming in on February, and that's the month that, you know, I like to not mention in our home. Um, <laughs> it's my birthday so month. <laughs> make sure you know where your shovels are and stuff because winter is coming. Um, we'll be back again next week, hopefully with... Um, Maybe some other subject matter, but unfortunately, it seems like these yes, days... Yes, I have a lot is... to say about the Twitter files and Fauci yes. and whatever, and I'm just sitting on all of that information. So we'll be, we'll be back, and you have a wonderful weekend. Take care. Bye.